All right, welcome to the channel. I have a, another anxiety success story. This guy's probably one of the coolest guys genuinely I've ever met. And um, he's been super awesome to uh, join me on my channel and share his story to hopefully give you guys some inspiration, tell you his journey so that you guys can see how recovery looks like. So um, I have Kyle here. Kyle, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the good introduction. All good, yeah. Sean. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks. Well, let's go in and get started. And tell me, how did how did this all begin for you? How did the anxiety all begin? When did it start? Um, so I think for me, a bit of a long story. I'll try and uh, make it as short as possible. But I would say if I look back, and we always talk about it, I don't think it's very important for one to say how it started and why you have anxiety to get out of it. But if I must pinpoint it, I would say I always had, I struggled with anxiety um, growing up as a kid. To look back into it, I mean, parents divorced when I was about three years old. And um, my, so I stayed with my mom's side. My, and my dad was a very much of an overachiever, you know, so in a very, very, uh, on the stricter side, sport, academics, everything, you know, push, push, push on that side. So um, if I had to look at it, Always had it, a bit of an introvert when I was was young, you know. So, but you just kind of think that's life. You just kind of think that's who I am, accept it. Nothing, nothing crazy about it um, at that point, just a normal upbringing. And um, I would say the first thing, I was about 16 years old, where I had... Um, Funny story. So I actually was at a, I was in school in a, in, a, in a private school back in South Africa, and I didn't study for a test. Now we've got like an on-site hospital at that school at the point, and I knew the only way for me to get out of this test is if I get to the hospital, they check you up, they say, okay, small little hospital, you know, with the ladies in there. So I thought I've got a plan. I'm going to run there, get my heart rate up and get my temperature up so they can book you because once they book you and you can bump your test and um obviously this plan worked great in my head and it's all going to be good now that i know with this covid you cannot actually get your core temperature up um no matter what you do it's kind of baseline so only when you've got a fever or you're really sick does that move but anyway started running running down to to the hospital like quickly and meant to walk trying to get my heart rate and everything up and the lady sat me down i said oh i'm not feeling too good lady um, she's like, okay, no problem, you know, all, all nice. Let me take your blood pressure. Let me check everything. Fever. Now your fever seems right, but when she took my blood pressure, um, she looked at me. And I'll never forget that look to this day. And I think that that was the issue. It was almost like you should be dead. You know, like something's wrong. Something's wrong. And she wanted to find the hospital. So now I'm like, this plan is really turning itself on its head. So she booked me in, and ever since that day, still to this day, if I go to the doctor, it's called white coat hypertension. I'll go there, and I'll tell them straight, listen, my anxiety, it, it, it's just the, the fear. Like, it's going to be high, and they look at me. So sometimes they look at me still, and they're like, damn, you know, damn. But now people understand it a lot better, and they, they, they say, okay, yeah, it's just anxiety because they can take your heart rate and see with regards to the pressure up and down. So they understand that. So that was at 16, and every time from there, I would have a bit of fear when every year you have to have a medical, and I just said, oh, I used to fear that, you know. So I started building a bit of a roadmap in my mind um, to fear to doctors. It was, it was basically, what are they going to tell me? What is wrong? So I'd live my life. I, I didn't have anxiety. I would, I would say I had uh, generalized anxiety and health anxiety, if I have to pinpoint my two. Social anxiety, I think that falls a little bit with the generalized anxiety. It wasn't like what I hear other people, they, they, they panic in these situations. I could do it. I'm a very social person. I was, you know, had a few drinks before, ease the nerves, and I could always do that. So everything was good until about, I think it was 23. When I was 23, uh, about 10 years ago, um, I was working for my father's company, and we were working out of town. And all of a sudden, I mean, I was playing a lot of sports and all of a sudden I started getting these constant headaches in the right side of my head above my ear on this, on this line. 
I just thought nothing of it. It was just it was wasn't very painful that I had to like you know stop work. It was just it was numbing there. It was, it was the pain was there, and and this carried on for about three months. And so with that, my vision my vision started getting a bit blurry, a bit of a dizzy a bit dizzy feeling. So I thought you know what now I'm gonna got the slight fear of doctors already. But I'm like, I need to go check myself out. You know, I've tried everything. I'm going to go to the doctor. And uh, so I went to him and um, he checked me out. And he's like, no, everything everything looks cool. Everything looks cool. But I'm saying, something's wrong. Like, I feel dizzy. And at that point, I was playing um, football or soccer, as you say. And during the match, which now I know is a, a DPDR, um, this would come up. Upon me and this wave would come through me and I literally had to stop playing. I told the, the, the captain, I was like, hey, I'm not feeling too well, I'm not feeling well, because you can't concentrate in that moment. Someone's passing you a soccer ball. I mean, you know, it's, it's impossible to try and keep that focus on the game where you're worrying about like something internally that's going on with you. So this 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 carried on and carried on and carried on. So I asked the biggest thing where this, the, the panic came in was one day I was like, I mean, the doctor's saying everything's fine, but I know there's something not right. I mean, the doctor should be able to tell you it's anxiety, but they, they I, I think also I try to manipulate the story to the doctor to not make it sound so bad of fear of him telling me it's catastrophic endings for you, you know? So I'd go in there and oh, I'm okay, but it's, it's a little bit of dizziness. He says, explain it. I'm like, I don't know. It's just, I don't feel normal. And then, um, so he said, yeah, he's done all the blood tests, all, everything. We went through everything. He says, no, that's fine. Then I went to an eye specialist, and they started flicking those lenses in front of your eyes. And all of a sudden, wow, everything I could see again. So then I started believing, you know, this is, maybe it's just my eyesight. Eyesight straining, you know, the, the leading to a bit of headaches and things like that. But deep down... I still didn't believe it. Like, it's something, something's not right because of the DP that was coming through, you know, the depersonalization that was coming through every time I would get a bit of exercise going or something. So I was like, no, something is not right with me. And the day I went on to Google, I started searching my symptoms. <laughs> and you know what happens there? I mean, that's when I felt the first time of this feeling of anxiety just come through my body. And I was like, oh, shit, this is real. I have brain cancer. You know, this is, this is, this is, I've convinced myself. And I'm sitting in my mom's house at the time. And I'm trying to keep it cool. And I'm like, no, there must, cannot be that. So now again, you're trying to, to, to search on, 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 on Google, Dr. Google, everything to try and manipulate the situation that it's not actually cancer. It's something else. So you're searching, not writing anything that you want. Cause you know, WebMD and all of them just hit you straight with, oh, you got brain cancer. Got a headache, you got brain cancer. Snip your nose, you got coronavirus, whatever it is. So that was the point that put me into, I would say, I don't want to put timelines to think, but that was the first time when I was 23. I just went into this place of staying at home. Um, there was much, not much excitement in me. It was... Just constantly worrying, worrying. I got kicked into the cycle at 23, where it was, you know, I would try and live, and we've spoken about this a few times. Uh, I'm one pretty much of a lucky guy because I've got so much always going on with work-wise, career, sport, pushing myself. So I couldn't accept that I cannot do these things. So I'd still go to soccer. I'd still go to football. still go to rugby. I'd still try and put myself out there. Social events, I'd try and go, but I wasn't myself, you know. And then um, I'll never forget my father, which I highly respect, you know, and um, he said to me, you know, it's time for a, for a proper brain scan, you know, and that was the time where I looked at him because the doctors can't find anything. And I mean, the doctors should know, you know, because I never had those panic attacks where I ended up in, in ER. It wasn't like, I need to get, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. It was just constant worry. Do I have cancer? Do I have cancer? Why has all the symptoms like this pain? It has to be this and that. So, that was the scare. And I thought, when my dad said that to me, you know, you've got to go for a brain scan. I said, oh, well, that's it. They're going to tell me. That's it, you know. And I don't know how it happened, but the doctor came back 
that same day and said, you got high sugar, you know, what? I got high sugar. But when he told me that, I, that was the answer I was looking for, something, something. Sean, I kid you not, I was, he told me I got to eat better and got to exercise, you know, so bought myself a bicycle back in the gym and all the fast food, all the chocolate, everything was, that's gone, it's history. My mom and dad, like, telling the family, oh, I can't believe the car's got diabetes. Uh, okay, well, I've got diabetes, that's it. Now I can cure myself, you know. And I would say after a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, training, training, boom, gone, back to normal. And I was like, because I think I put something onto it, my my nerves and my, my you know everything came down to 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 baseline again because it's like oh you're not in a threat there's, 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 you're not in a, you don't have to worry Carl you know yeah, subconsciously you know okay I've got diabetes you know how to deal with it eat a healthy exercise etc cetera, etc cetera. and it, and I went away um, so from about 23 and onwards to now I would say you'd get the odd scare you know I, I went through if my, my lymph node swelled up, I was like, but I wasn't, I never got back into this, the, into the cycle. That, that was the key. I never found myself getting back into the cycle. It was always a panic of a week or two, go to the doctor, I take these medicines. I mean, over the time I had, I could feel like heart palpitations, but somehow I never got back. It wasn't a constant everyday thing where it's on my mind. It was then, I was in the moment, I would panic. As you know, health anxiety, I never cured it. I never dealt with it. So it was there from the, the, the time, obviously, when I had the scare of, of, of brain cancer. So these things would happen. I mean, testicle cancer, lymph node cancers, throat cancers, all that thing. It was always cancer. So then I started thinking, Carl, you definitely have health anxiety. You've got the fear of cancer. There's actually, that's one of the things people fear. Until last year, July, everything was good. I moved up to the Bahamas and um, moved around a lot with my career. So I ended up, you know, I used to live in the Caribbean when I was 18 in Miami, working around. So I decided, okay, let me come back to the Bahamas. And uh, my girlfriend at the time said, that would be great. We're going to move up here. So we moved up here last year, December. And then July last year, we went to Mexico. And a great holiday was actually for my birthday this time last year. And... Nothing, everything was great. I mean, tequila was going, you know, the Rios, we were having a fantastic time. And we were riding bicycles around Tulum and um, I played up common, very beautiful place, rented bicycles and moved all over. And when I got back after the holiday, um, I just started having sensations again in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the pelvis area. And I was just numbing, nothing, nothing of a concern, just there, there. And I started thinking, is it the new protein I'm taking? Is it the new supplements? My girlfriend said, I should start taking. Something's not right there. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a stressful moment. It was just something there. It was just like a, a nudging feeling, you know. And then I started going to, to gym again. And I'll do certain exercises. And I'll get a sharp pain down there. Uh, I think it's called the pundal nerve or something like pundal nerve. It's a cyclist syndrome that they get, that sometimes when you sit it, it can pinch nerves and things like that. It's a very sharp pain. And when I started swimming and snorkeling and diving in the Bahamas, certain movements would trigger that um, thing. So after a while of this, this numbing feeling down there and, and, and sharp pains now and then coming, it was fine. I could live with it. But after a while, the day I picked up my phone, I was actually at a hairdresser and I was sitting there waiting in line. And I said, let me just Google if I can find some more information on this, you know, there we go again. Through me that day, I sat down. She sat me down. You know, she puts your cover or whatever over you. And I came up prostate cancer, mm. and then all of a sudden, I mean, she was talking to me now. I went numb. I couldn't. I couldn't even. I couldn't even respond to this woman. And I was just sitting there, and I'm like, shit. Yeah, we go again. I've never done the, 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 the prostate check. And I'm back into this now. Now I'm, now I'm full blown. I mean, I've got work to do, but I cannot concentrate. I've got people meeting with me. Palms are sweating. My mind's everywhere thinking, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with this? 
And I built up some courage to finally book myself into a doctor. I mean, some people say, oh, you always got to get checked out first. But that was my fear, is going to the yeah. doctor, because I built up a fear because if I don't go there, he can't tell me the bad news. So we're trying avoidance, you know, and avoidance is obviously not the best thing. And um, so after the panic, I said to myself the one day, I was about two weeks later, I said, Carl, you just got to do it. You have to go and get checked out. We went to the doctor, nervous wreck, sitting in, sitting in the waiting room, and like the thoughts are going through, how are you going to react to this? What happens if he tells you, is this, who are you phoning first? You know, you're phoning your parents. What happens when this all goes down? I live so far away from, from, from your base, you know, the family. Anyway, check was done, everything was sorted, and um, so that relief came, comes over. It's like, oh, she's like, you know, I'm, I'm okay. But the pain never went away. It carried on staying, carried on staying. So I went back to him. I said, hey, buddy, like, sorry about this, but the pain's still there. And then he starts talking about you've got to go see gastro guys because now gastro leads to, you know, all this. And then it's cancer again. Then it's then it's all this. They're, gonna, they're the guys that are going to tell you it's cancer. So I was like, no, shit, i got to manipulate the situation again that I can find out a trick that it's not this. So I did a bit of research, and there was actually somebody that does um, physiotherapy that area that that and i mean she told me everything um she actually works on cancer patients and um people that have had surgeries and stuff on there and then they, she said you know there's nothing you know you're fine it's just there's no structural damage with you um you just got to do some exercises do some exercise but i carried on doing these exercises and exercises and obviously my anxiety went from a 10 it was peaking down to about a four after the physio. She had just says, Carl, you got, there's no cancer. I'm telling you there's no cancer. But obviously, over this prolonged stress, we're talking in a couple of months now, my, my body's un, been under this, this, this panic, you know. And it just got to a point where you're constantly searching. You need reassurance. You need to find help. I can't carry on like this. I could live with the pain. Funny enough, when I concentrated, I, I did some um, work around the house and uh, – you know, fix, fix up some carpentry and things like that, the pain goes away. Really enough, the pain goes away. So now I'm trying to fig, figure out um, Dr. Sano I came across, and I thought I spoke to you about this this, this thing that's like un, unresolved, you know, traumas in your life and everything like that could lead to all, you know, all, these, all these pains. And they do say pelvic pain and back pain and, and stuff like that is actually anxiety-based. So I went hard. I mean, I read both his books, Healing Back Pain and that in, in, in about three days. I went back to, to a woman online that she's also got a Facebook group and the people are they coming with every symptom. Mm-hmm. I'm not promoting him. I do believe that that does have its place. Um, you actually need to journal about your past, everything that you're holding on to and everything like that, that that's unresolved. If there's any resentment, any unforgiveness, a lot of people battle with grief in their life, guilt, shame, these type of things. You know, and I'm, to me, I still believe that they're, they're, that's true to a point, but it didn't cure me 100%. So um, I went into a full-blown, obviously, it was just panic after panic after panic. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, uh, get over this thing. So I was back on the health anxiety forums, um, Instagram, and that's obviously where I find you. So it's been for me, after the, the pain in the pelvis went away, actually why it went away was the one day I was lying in bed, it was a Sunday night, I'd eaten some pizza and stuff like that, and I was lying down, and all of a sudden I had this like flutter by my heart area, which I know was indigestion at the time. I don't really ever get heartburn or indigestion. So it was just at the time when my nerves were so sensitized with this whole, you know, having prostate cancer or bowel cancer. I mean, again, you read the symptoms, your body starts having the symptoms because your mind, your body is so connected. It's like everything you start looking at. So my body was so sensitized that I had this flutter at, at, at the left side by the heart and I jumped up and I was like, shit, I'm having a heart attack. Ran to the, you just actually in that moment, funny enough, um, how you actually react, you, you don't react how you think you would. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got up, I was, I was like, 
was that said nothing, ran to the bathroom, just looked at myself in the mirror and said, oh shit, you know, like wet my face. And that was now pelvis area pain gone, 100% heart. It was hard for the heart palpitations, the pains in the chest. And now I started looking at um, what are the symptoms over there for heart attacks and everything. And um, I went, yeah, everything. I'm walking on on my job and I would have these, these, these tight chests. I'd have the pain. I was like feeling something's on my chest. So all day this went on, went on, went on. And I was like, Carl, this is just tiring this is really really just tiring it's this health anxiety so i went on to an online person from from london that does um is it uh cbt mm-hmm. yeah cbt and um so i did the course on health anxiety and you go through everything 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 and it worked it did, it did pretty well they put you on onto your fears based on one to ten you got to start it, so my my last fear was going to get checked out at the doctor. That was my biggest fear. Ten out of ten was that. Eight out of ten was probably going back to gym at the time with the heart, you know. But funny enough, when I went through all of that, um, the last day was going to the doctor. I was like, no, making excuses in my head. I'm not going to go to this doctor. Uh, I can't, I can't. But anyway, forced myself into it. Same thing, sitting there. Now it's not for the pelvis, it's for the heart area. And lovely doctor told her everything. I said, just before, you know, like, I have health anxiety. And um, she was like, okay, no, that's cool. Like, really made me feel comfortable. And uh, she checked everything and said, you're perfectly fine. From there, everything went away. The heart palpitations went away. Um, the, the pains in the chest, all those symptoms that I was having went away. So, basically... I was okay. I was okay for that moment. I think it went on for about a month to six weeks, and we had a party, um, and quite a big party. We overindulged a lot of alcohol. Mm-hmm. When I woke up in the morning, I mean, I was kind of on my road to recovery. You know, after I checked my heart, I started accepting. I health anxiety, just allow it. But that first setback was so hard that it threw me completely off because I always had physical symptoms up to that point. But after I had a big night out, I um, woke up with intrusive thoughts. And that's all got to do with now that we, the body's been under such prolonged stress for such a, a period of time that I was, I, was, my, my, I was sensitized, completely sensitized. So... I thought I was fine for those six weeks, and the next minute it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was even worse. My intrusive thoughts, thoughts were worse for me than my uh, physical symptoms because I cannot control. I'm a guy that likes control. I mean, I project manage uh, big, big, hard, multi million dollar projects and things like that. So now I have these thoughts going in my head that, it, I mean, geez, I had no idea what this is about. Physical symptoms are gone, but now it's thoughts that threw me off. And that's to where about, I think uh, I came across you, where it was like I was in a panic. I was in a serious panic because uh, I'd met up with you. We had our Skype interview. But those thoughts, and I got sick at that time as well. So it was just a combination of, of, I thought that's it. This is worse than the symptoms because it wasn't confirmed that there's symptoms, but now my mind's telling me these these, these um, intrusive thoughts are horrible, and it's and, it, and it's and it's it's, it's literally obsessive. It's, it's 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 compulsive. It's coming all the time, you know. And I'm trying to deal with it. So that's when I met you, and you said to me, um, "I had to." I said, "Listen, I need to go see a doctor. I need to get um, um, uh, anxiety medication." But the doctor told me. Um, she wanted to give me, uh, what was it again? It was, I um, can't remember. It's antidepressants mixed with these things. And I was like, but maybe I'm depressed. These people are saying this. And you told me, no, 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 don't do it, which I, you know, I should have listened. I was like, no, no, Sean, you don't understand, man. This is, this is serious. I'm worrying about myself now. I'm like panicking up. The biggest fear about someone with, with, with anxiety is losing control. There's, and I'm losing control. I'm a guy that, you know, I'm a people pleaser. I've got all of those traits of a type A and B mixture personality that doesn't really work too well with anxiety, you know, perfectionism or, or uh, overachiever, uh, people pleaser, hard worker. But I was like, 
lady, give me whatever you can give me because this is scaring me. And she told me then it's to a psychiatrist. And then she's like, oh, do you want to go see a psychologist? And I'm like, just bring it, you know, and just rolling out the dollars. Let's just go through all these things. But I told them, I said, um, it's not depression, it's, 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 it's anxiety. She says, no, no, but you've got to go on, go on these tablets and it takes a while. And I was on those tablets for two weeks, three weeks, and it was probably the worst time of my life. She actually put me on the highest dose. I don't know why, but it was literally the anxiety went even when t- times 10 while I was on this. So I was in a, in a hot mess until I met you. So all the symptoms, cancer, heart attack, whatever it is, uh, depression, schizophrenia, it all came. I mean, I was watching movies. It would trigger me um, like the Joker. I'd watch the Joker, the new Joker, and I was like, I couldn't watch it. I'm in the cinema. My mate said, he's loving it. And I'm like, I'm literally like on a roller coaster of emotions watching this movie. I'm like, oh, how much longer this thing's got, man? Because you're pitching yourself like, do I have, can I do this? I mean, am I going crazy? This guy's crazy. I mean, he's gone through the, kind of the same stuff as me, well, why would I not be like that, you know, and it's all this fueling the fire, fueling the fire, you know, that we walk out of the cinema and my mate's like, hey, enjoy that, I'm like, no, not really, it was a bit hectic, I think, but normally I'd love those movies, but, you know, you sense it out, so yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> where, where it brings me, to, you know. You know, it's so interesting, because, like, for me, with my struggle, it was, I was convinced, just like you, there was something physical, like there was something physical. Yeah. And then what I learned from my story was, you know, I went to this ER for like, I think the fourth time or something. And uh, the, the, this doctor was a little bit, he was a little bit more cutthroat and he was like, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, this is anxiety, right? Yeah. And I was convinced I didn't want it to be anxiety. I didn't. I, cause I also had the stigma behind it too. Cause I kind of like, right. and the thing is, you know, I'm sure you probably experienced this too, cause you are a very high functioning individual, right? You're like, you, I mean, you're in the Bahamas, snorkel, you paddleboard, like you, you have a great job. You are very social. You're very articulate. Having anxiety is just kind of, it doesn't fit the identity. It doesn't fit my agenda what I want. You know, it's not. And so I remember once I came to the conclusion, oh my God, this may actually all be anxiety. This all may actually be anxiety. Same thing. My, it ended up shifting. So the physical symptoms were still there, but they weren't as bad. And I was convinced they were anxiety. But then the, the emotions were coming and I would feel intense amount of sadness and like it would spike during different. And so I convinced myself the same thing that, oh, my God, no, maybe this, maybe I was wrong this whole time. Maybe it was something mental and I was just looking at the wrong direction. Yeah. And so it's but, you know, it's so common. Most people kind of have this. They have physical symptoms. And then once those are understood, naturally, it's like, but I feel sad all the time now. And maybe something, and so like, it's almost like anxiety is trying to find something to stay alive, right? To me, it makes me laugh because it's, 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 obviously I'm doing much better now, but if I look back, the way it would trick me into everything, I mean, I would watch Netflix and from, you know, you can watch anything and it's, it's literally, it, when you're sensitized, it tricks you into everything. I mean, as I said to you, the coronavirus sparked and, um, you know, everything just threw this on. You're going to die if you get this and all this. So I'm watching. I'm watching with my girlfriend. And, you know, what are the symptoms? And I told you about this. You know, it's, it's, it's um, shortness of breath, uh, sore throat, and all this. And there it goes. There goes, the, there goes my throat getting a bit sore that night. I'm like, don't. You know what Sean says? It's just anxiety. If you feel it, you're going to get these symptoms. Just, just allow it, you know. And it's, it's so funny that it can do that because with depression, I was that was the next one. Depression, everything's catastrophic for me. You know, it's, it's, it's depression is depression, but depression leads to suicide. Um, cancer, you die. Heart attack, you die. There's no other. There's no gray area. It's just you know, it's one to the point. That's what it is. You get it. You did. And I think to myself that a, a big thing of it was maybe a bit of psychology is that you actually, you want to live a good life. You know, you don't want to leave this world early. That, that, that's, that's one thing to me. Um, everyone has these thoughts. I looked at the mind that 70% of your thoughts are actually negative. And I mean, you have 40,000 thoughts a day. But 
we don't, when someone's not sensitized or doesn't battle with anxiety or is not in the cycle, they don't, they don't, they don't react or, or give fuel to these thoughts. But when you're in that cycle, you wake up and you've had a few drinks or something like that and this thought comes over, a horrible thought. Just You should let it pass and whatever. I mean, I probably um, had those thoughts before I was in the cycle and I just let it pass, you know. But now you're sensitizing. You're like trying to fix it. I'm trying to fix it. Why am I having these thoughts? Like stop it. You know, you, you're, getting, you're getting agitated with yourself and that's putting fuel in the fire. Now, you're, now you're, your subconscious believing you're, under, you're in trouble. Um, so the fear, it's just a cycle. We all know the cycle. You just put fuel on it. And if you just allow it, your body says, okay, no, you're not, you're not, you're not in threat. But deep down, the allowing part's quite different, uh, difficult. Acceptance is very difficult. You think you're accepting it, but you're overanalyzing. You, you know, your, your mind, your body and your mind are so connected that it's, it's telling you there, there, there's stuff going on. You're not accepting it. You're actually, you, you're still worrying. You're still worrying. You're thinking, oh, I've got this brain fog. I'm just going to go through the day. But you're like, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Oh, man, I'm feeling okay. Oh, there it is. There's the anxiety. And it's, that's not accepting anxiety, you know. So we'll probably get to it. But my, my, my key was I got so used to the brain fog, the DP, um, that I actually started accepting it. Like, this is my life. And when that happens, that that that's that change, it's not, it just slowly starts getting better and better and your clarity and everything just starts clearing. And a few weeks down the line, you go, you know, oh my gosh, I actually haven't had anxiety. My anxiety from 10, it went down to five, it went down to, I mean, one, sometimes zero, and you're functioning normal. No one knows anything's up. You're just normal. Yeah. yeah. If your, your friends, the setback comes in, you know, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, that, that's definitely true. Yeah, you know, even in terms of the intrusive thoughts you were talking about, it's like, so anxiety is designed to, it's designed to look at everything negatively on purpose, right? There's a survival advantage to that. And so what happens is when you were talking about the 40,000 thoughts, when you're anxious, your mind kind of loses the resiliency to let go of like the negative thoughts. So it, it will latch onto it and won't let go. And so Correct. And then, so what happens is that people kind of kind of fixate on that. So when yeah. we say like, yeah, and like you know, like allowing, accepting. You know, when I was God, when I was struggling with it, I I remember people had told me early on, yo, you just need to accept it, you just need to allow it. But I was so stubborn, I was convinced that they were just telling me to deal with it. It was almost like they were neglecting it, and they were like, I have to deal with this forever. And I was like, no, they don't understand. You know, they don't understand. I mean, anxiety is a word that gets thrown around so easily these days. I mean, I have these conversations with people and they're like, I was on the boat and I mean, we got in the Bahamas and we're always on this boat and we're having a drink and we're laughing and she's like, oh, you know, it makes me so anxious and, and things like that. Now, obviously, I like that word because me and you, we know, and, and the people in the group and, 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 and um, in the Baba Panic uh, group, we know what it is and I know those people know what it is. So for you to try and explain to somebody that doesn't know what it is that thinks yeah it's got a bit of nervous energy yeah i think we all get nervous energy i mean that's the thing but when you're in that cycle they don't know it's like you can't get out you it's, it's not like oh, i had some nervous energy you constantly brain fogged worrying about everything as a moon so that I, I like to that's the best part about your approach with this group is is everyone you know in that group actually is battling with proper anxiety. I'm not saying the people that don't have it don't have the fears and everything like that, but there's a, there's a big difference between like a way it is the a pandemic now, you know, the people are saying it's a pandemic uh, anxiety, but there's, I think there's, there's people that really know what anxiety is where, where, where you're stuck in, in a cycle where you, as soon as you open your eyes in the morning, if it was your heart you're worrying about, if it was cancer you're worrying about, if it was... Um, your eyesight or pains anywhere in your body, health, anxiety, or anything, that's immediately triggered from when you wake up, if you manage to sleep at night, from until you put your um, your head on the pillow at night. It's not a breakthrough once, you know, oh, I'm feeling better. It's just constant. It's just constant. And obviously, morning anxiety was the worst. You're stuttering your words. You're going to meetings. I mean, I used to tell you how do I approach it, and you told me such a great thing. Is you use that nervous energy. It's not easy, but take that nervous energy because you're full of energy. That 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 it's not good energy. It's 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 um, 
you know, it's, it's all the nerves and, and, and adrenaline pumping through your body, but turn it into something positive. And I did, I could pull it off, but be dumb. I mean, my hands are sweating. People, people have to look at me and they're like, Shit, this guy's a bit sick, man. But, you know, you, you're not looking good, but you can, you can still, you can do it. You can, you can push through it. And you always say, um, it's a simple thing. And it is a simple thing, but no one's saying it's easy, you know, uh, to get out of it. So where I am today, I told you last night I would get triggered here and there, but um, basically it's, 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 it's so manageable now, you know. It's, 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 I watch something that would normally trigger me if it's suicide, depression, cancer. During that thing online that I did, she made me watch things on cancer which I would never do. I watched things on people dying of cancer, what they went through. And to be honest, it actually helps. It really does help you. Um, heart attack went through YouTube. And I was sat there. I'm like a nervous wreck. But I watched it. And I watched it. And exposure therapy. And it, it actually helps. So it, really good. It, it's really interesting because like in the beginning, when you're really, when we're all really sensitized, the mind and body are really connected during anxiety. But a lot of people say anxiety is like mental, but it really is about survival. So it's like your mind and body are really connected. So if you selectively focus on something, your body will create physical symptoms. Right. Now, as you get desensitized, as you get better, this the separation uh, it kind of separates. It's not as joint. Um, you know, it was really funny. I, I was talking to this client months ago, but he was telling me he was like watching the unsolved mysteries. And what was interesting was I was actually also watching it around the same time, but he was super sensitized. And so he got triggered very quick. He was like, man, I shouldn't have watched that. Why was that? That was terrible. I should have never done that. And I remember watching it and it's been so long for me because like, you know, since I've like recovered, I was watching the show and I didn't realize, but I was like, no, 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 no. Had I been watching that during his state, I would have been destroyed. I would have been and exactly. now it's been like so long it's almost like there's like because the mind and body aren't as connected either like it's like it was just like oh that's you almost look at it as a way like most people that never struggle with anxiety you look at it as like oh that that can happen but it won't happen like it won't happen right. it's just like right. this connect. um but i know exactly what you're talking about and and that's like i told you sorry um like i told you the same intrusive thoughts that will come if they come to me now it just passes by. It just passes by. But though, you know, you switch back in time, it would throw me off. I mean, I had to, I was one that never wanted to give him a year about these people that, that um, can't leave their, their house, can't drive. And I said, I'm not going to be that. I will force myself through me. So I think that really, really helped me. And because this is my first anxiety uh, a cycle that came in last year, it was when I was 23. So I always knew I can get out of this. Some of it, without even talking, I knew that it's, it's a seasonal thing. But if I don't know how to, I mean, with you, I've learned the fundamentals of anxiety, the basics of anxiety, what it actually is, how it works, how, your, how you fuel it, how you get over it using the aware process, you know, chill out, let it come, do some action, and it's passed. You know, don't, it's tricky sometimes because, these new symptoms come in and everything is under that umbrella of anxiety. And I told people now that they told me, they say, just, it's anxiety. They're like, yeah, but it's anxiety. Leave it there and you'll see, you know, treat it the same way and you're going to see what's going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely helped me. Uh, I've grown tremendously. If I look back at where I was, I was functioning at 12 out of 10. I was in a, in a panic stage, but I wasn't, I'm too proud to, to, to let people see it. They could see it, but it wasn't rushing to ER. I was like, I'm going to fix this thing myself. I'll fix everything. I'm going to fix this thing myself. And the more you try and fix it, it's just a no, no, you're feeling it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the trick. It's the, the yeah. solution is counterintuitive, right? It's like you try to fix it because you, it works for especially with somebody like you, who's so smart, who is so driven. Um, whose work, your project management work makes you like it. That's the, that's exactly. the thing you need. Everything is on schedules and programs and putting this all together. How do I solve it? You know, you've got to use initiative to get this out. But this is one thing that you've got to allow that is not, again, out of control. It's out of control. And that's your fear. I have to, you, you try and control things to work, to make your life the best and easiest and peace of mind, you know? So that's awesome. 
and and you've made fantastic progress and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. Oh, for sure, for sure. And, and the good news is, is that, you know, I, I don't see you falling back in like this ever again, ever. Like, cause I think you consciously came out. You're consciously. I don't want to put time limits and setbacks to it, but I've had one or two, three, four setbacks, but the setbacks aren't as bad. And that, that little graph that you've got that shows you there's no straight line to, to, to freedom. And I'll say it again, don't, people shouldn't be looking at the end result. Just, just go, just try and have a better day. Just try and deal with it. And a good day, like you always say, is not a day that you don't have anxiety. A good day is when you, when you, when, when, when the, the nervous energy is all over you, you, you're with friends, you're at work, you're in a social gathering, and you manage to push through that. Because let me tell you, anxiety can't hurt you. Anxiety is harmless. And that's one thing that helps you. So what are you running from? Because you know it's anxiety. Once you know it's anxiety, you've been checked out. I promise you, it can't hurt you. So just stick it through. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a comfortable feeling, but just push it through. So you you telling your mind it's trying to trick you. Hey, Carl, you're okay. You're okay. And it just gets easier and easier and easier. So that's exactly it, man. That's exactly, and that's how recovery looks like. And mm-hmm. it's something a lot of people don't really talk about because it's like, oh, accept. And then but you know, if somebody was just like kind of like explain how the recovery journey looks like i think that would have helped me out a lot um but yeah so what would you what would you really um what would you tell somebody who was who's in your position maybe a year ago or so who's really struggling who's who's really having a tough time who really isn't sure what to do what kind of what um, you doing? we've all been there you know so it's amazing, you know, like I always use the word it's a gift. I mean, I chat to one of my mates, my best mate, actually, he battles with it back in South Africa and I chat to him quite a bit and uh, I, sp- I told him about you and um, and I told him, you know, it's it's um, exciting, ain't no life sentence. And I always use the word it's a gift and people say, oh, I'd love to see how this feeling and, and the people that might be watching this now to say, how's exciting a gift? But you'll see be patient. You're going to see why it's a gift because the amount of growth, I mean, just on yourself that you get out of this. I mean, in life, the people that grow the most actually have gone through the biggest struggles. Um, you've got to be that tree that, that, that sways with the wind. You know, the hardest trees break in hurricanes. It's the tree that's flexible that goes through it. And you grow. I mean, I remember after my first cycle when I was 23, and after it, it, it lasted, I don't like to put time to things, but it lasted quite a while because I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know what anxiety was. Once that passed and I was I was so more, the amount of confidence I grew, people don't even know who I was. I mean, I went back and I was, I was, I was the one leading conversations. I've become a leader in my job. Um, so the gift part is I, 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 the empathy for other people. You know, it's, it's, I want to help. I mean, it's funny. It's most people that go through this. Want to help people that are suffering because it's not a coping mechanism. You don't, you don't, you don't live with anxiety the rest of your life. As crazy as it sounds to people watching now that are that are in the cycle, um, I can promise you it's not a life sentence. It, 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 it gets better. Just know how to deal with it. Stay away from the forums that are coping mechanisms because all you're doing is getting some dopamine for that moment to feel better in that moment, and tomorrow or two, three days later, it's going to come again. Um, so have patience. Um, definitely join up. Not promoting it, but to with you, it's, it's a full-on support thing. It's personal. You know, you, we, we have our scouts who got you on a call. A lot of times I knew the answer, but I was having a bad day and, and I just couldn't say, this This is not anxiety. Sean, this, you can't tell me this is anxiety. You're saying, it's anxiety. I've been there. I've done it. And you look on your, your, your private Facebook groups and, then, and they, they, they talk exactly the same things of what people are going through. There's no uniqueness to anxiety because if I had to tell you what my thoughts were, people would be like, oh, no, that must be unique. And the guys would say, oh, no, 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 I have that too. And another guy, yeah, I have that. The other woman says, yeah, no, we all got to that too. You know? So I'm like, it's crazy. So definitely it's not a life sentence. Patience, patience. Don't look at the end result. Day by day, you know, you're going to get better. That anxiety, 10 out of 10, freaking out, waking up, slowly you're going to get better. We, some afternoons it comes down 2 o'clock where it used to be 6 o'clock in the evening, down to 2, down to 10 in the morning. Soon it's gone away. 
you will have to have setbacks as part of the recovery. It actually builds you on different things. So a setback might be alcohol, a party, uh, getting sick, overworking in the gym, like all your modules, which is fantastic, which I highly recommend to anyone um, doing the thing. It's everything is spelled out there. And the last thing I want to say is what helped me was I got to a point where I was like, you know, this is these symptoms are there, these thoughts are there. I was so tired of these thoughts. I was so tired of waking up in the morning. I tried everything. I'd, I'd listen. I'd, I'd read Tay Weeks, which was uh, uh, fantastic. Um, the Dare book. I did all the Dares, which is also very good. Um, similar approaches, you know, but you had the one-on-one -on -one courses, which is fantastic. And I took it on. And I basically, sorry, I got to a point where I was just like, if it is, it is. If I've got cancer, so be it. I, I cannot keep on living in fear, rocking on this rocking chair, getting nowhere. You know, it's constantly fear. All I'm doing is not enjoying the moment. I'm not enjoying the moment. Screw it. If it's a heart attack, if it's depression, if it's this, if it is, your word is, it is. And when I, that way it's powerful because you're telling your subconscious mind, I don't care anymore. So stop, stop worrying, stop. You know, so that 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 to me what was the key. Just that was the acceptance where I got to a point and live your life. I would say, don't stop. I know it's probably easier for me to say now, but push it. I mean, I didn't stop going to work. I did not stop going to work. I probably looked like a wreck, but I did not stop going to work. I kept on pushing through. I kept on going to social gatherings. Alcohol was scaring me. Um, so I woke up with intrusive thoughts that I stopped drinking because not a lot, but I, I drank, I have coffee in the mornings. I'm not letting it beat me. So, yeah. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's great, man. And like I say, you're gonna, it's, you've come really far. It's only going to get better. It's just going to keep going. Yeah. And like you said it so well, it's just, just focus on getting a little bit better. As long as that's happening, recovery is a, right. I always say that um, a rock climber, a mountain climber, he never looks at the peak. It's day by day, you know? So if he looks at the peak, it's too overwhelming. He's going to say, I can't do this. Because he's looking at the cliff and he's just moving in the right direction one day at a time. Yeah, it's, some days are very difficult to climb. But before he knows it, he's at the peak. But if he looks back and looks at the whole, the end result, that's where you, you, you're putting too much. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate you doing this so much. Um, I know place, all man. people that are listening are really appreciative. Um, I got to come down to Bahamas at some point, man. You got to come visit. Uh, I've got my people waiting outside. We're going on the boat now. Okay. Here's a cold. So, well, you're always welcome, man. Of course, of course. Thank you for everything, Sean. I really appreciate it. I mean, you're not just, you're not doing this as a business. You really care about people. So, um, again, thank you so much. You've helped me out tremendously, man. Of course, man. And you and I will still always stay in touch. So for sure, for sure. All right, cool, man. Well, have have a good time with your yeah. friends. And, uh, thank you. And then for those that are listening, if they really want to know a little bit more about how to overcome, click the link down below. I'll put a link down in my private Facebook group. In this group, I'm putting even more exclusive content about how to overcome, how to really fully recover. Um, when you do hit that link, it's going to ask you three questions. It's very important that you answer those three questions to the best of your ability. We are, we want people to join the group, but we want to maintain the integrity of the group. We don't want this to be a forum where there's, you know, a lot of toxic energy or a lot of story topping or fear mongering. We want this to be for people that are serious about overcoming, that get the right knowledge, that see other people like Kyle, like myself, like other people that have recovered, giving you steps, giving you solutions on how to overcome. So hit the link down below. Kyle, thanks again, man. And I'll see you guys later. My pleasure, man. Have a good day.